Game ownership concerns have sparked up once again after a licensed game from eight years ago, Tron Evolution, is no longer available to buy or install and play even if someone bought it. Users have discovered that trying to activate the game anytime after October is now an impossible task, seemingly thanks to everyone's favourite DRM, Securom. The story about a licensed game being pulled from Steam is nothing new. That unfortunately happens all the time. Licenses expire, rights are given up. We've seen it all the time with games based on movies, TV shows, comic books, what have you. But usually, and as is right, you can still play the game if you bought the game. I mean, that makes sense, doesn't it? You've spent money on a product, you should be able to play that product product in perpetuity. Not so with Tron Evolution thanks to DRM that no longer works. Securom, like many anti-piracy measures, is not exactly popular with the game playing public, especially because these anti-piracy measures often affect the paying customers a lot more than pirates. Pirates can work their way around. Always online requirements or performance issues that DRM have impacted. More crucially, pirates tend to have a better claim of ownership over the games they have, even though they didn't legally access them. Meanwhile, the paying customers have less ownership, something which has been highlighted by this situation concerning Tron Evolution. The issue here is that Disney is not using Securom anymore, but it hasn't fixed it so that a previous game like Tron Evolution that was using Securom doesn't need to now. Basically, if you own the game but don't currently have it installed, you can't play it. If you install it now, it will ask you to activate it, but there's nothing to activate it with. An interesting aside is that despite being eight years old, Tron Evolution still has people who want to play it. I say that's interesting because I've seen people push back against concerns regarding long-term game ownership, especially when they're trying to defend online streaming services like Google Stadia. Someone I know brushed aside the concern of long-term game ownership by saying, oh well, you know, that'll be 10 years from now. That's when games might not be available to play anymore. Who wants to play these games 10 years from now? It's not a valid concern that what you buy might not be playable in the future. Here we are with Tron Evolution. Even a game like Tron Evolution has people wanting to play it years and years and years after launch. That's how this issue was discovered. People didn't go looking for this issue. They were genuine people, a number of them, who were trying to play Tron Evolution recently and couldn't because they can't activate the thing. Fact is, people spent money on this game. They have a reasonable right to be able to play the bloody thing, whether that's tomorrow or a decade from now. But this is yet another grim reminder that the all-digital future, and especially an all-streaming future if that comes to pass, makes good on the drooling dreams that publishers have had since at least two generations ago. The dream that they get to exert dominance over the customers in perpetuity because they are only selling you access to their goods, they are not selling you the actual goods. There are many reasons for publishers to embrace an all digital future, one reason being that without physical goods they can drive the production costs down but keep prices the same. But eradicating the concept of customer ownership is a pretty big bonus for them. We've seen it with intrusive DRM, we've seen it with constant online checkups, we've seen it with the last generation's war on used games that publishers waged. Mainstream game companies have this self-entitled attitude. They feel entitled to sell you something without actually selling you something. It was difficult for game companies to exert their will when physical goods were more abundant, but digital sales are so popular now that publishers have largely gotten what they want. Chiefly, the ability to sell you access to a product while retaining ownership of the product itself. And since they did get what they want, I think that anything listed on the PlayStation Store, the Xbox Marketplace, Steam, any game that's listed that you have to buy but don't own, that should be in the game's fucking title. It shouldn't be buried in an end user license agreement, it should say up front, it should be a warning. You do not own this game, you are paying for access. Every game should have 
conditional access in parentheses right next to its name. Because if publishers want to retain ownership over what they sell, then that is exactly what they're actually selling. They are selling conditional access. Access that's dependent on external factors beyond the customer's control, like Disney still paying for Securom, servers for a game staying online. If we don't get a reasonable expectation that we can keep playing these games whenever we want, that we own these games, then publishers shouldn't be allowed to list them as if they are selling the fuckers. Now, according to responses from Disney received by users, the company is aware of this issue with Tron Evolution and might fix it one day. They've apparently said, Our team is aware that the activation site for this game is no longer live and has since been shut down. At this time, if the game was not already previously installed, it will no longer be able to be launched. We are looking into this hiccup and hope to patch this in the future. However, at this time, we do not have any current estimated time on when this will be. Thank you for your patience. It's quite clear this is a low priority for them. It's an old game. They're likely assuming not that many people are going to be affected by it. But you know, even if it affects just one person, it shouldn't be acceptable. But according to game publishers, it is. It is acceptable because you're paying for access. Conditional access. And if those conditions no longer apply, then fuck you. It's something to think about, as digital games are pushed even more thanks to the cloud, and you'll be expected to stream games not with a subscription like Netflix, but games that you're still directly buying one by one. If it were an industry I trusted, Maybe I wouldn't be so concerned, but this is the fucking game industry. Yet again, trying to trade on trust while having no trust fostered. So yeah, I'm not going to take it on faith that we will not see a lot of similar issues come up in the future. I hope we don't see those issues, but I absolutely do not trust that we won't.